I would just like to bring it to everyone's attention that at no point in Lonzo Ball's career I have ever called him a bust. I've never called Lonzo Ball a bust. Even when he was with the Lakers, I didn't call him a bust. Even when the Lakers traded him, I never called him a bust. So I'm looking at you, Kendrick Perkins, and I'm going to play this clip from Kendrick Perkins so you guys could understand what I'm referring to. This is who he is. He's not a superstar and he's not a star. Um, he's, he was the number two pick with high expectations from his father and everybody else. And to me, he's a bust because this is not a number bust. Two. Yes, this is not number two production right here. You, a number two pick, this is not what you draft a number two pick. I don't know if Kendrick Perkins was just trying to grab a headline and usually there's always one analyst that will go really far and call a player a bust prematurely. But like, here's the one thing that really annoys me about Kendrick Perkins' take on Lonzo Ball. A lot of us tend to forget number two overall picks for the past 10 years haven't been that good. If you really want to think about it, I'll list a couple of the number two overall picks over the past 10 years so you guys can understand. In the 2009 NBA draft, we had Hashim Thabit. And if you want to go back to 2008, the number two pick was Michael Beasley. He didn't have that good of a career either. 2010 was Evan Turner. 2011 was Derek Williams. 2012 was Michael Kidd Gilchrist. 2013 was Victor Oladipo. 2014 was Jabari Parker. 2015 was D'Angelo Russell. 16 was Brandon Ingram. 17 was Lonzo Ball. 18 was Marvin Bagley. And of course, this past year, we've gotten one of the best number two overall picks we've had in a while in John Morant. So the one thing that bothers me about what Kendrick Perkins said about Lonzo Ball, and this was over a week ago, he said this on December 21st, 2000. 19 is the fact that he said that number two overall picks typically contribute well they're expected to contribute they don't always contribute lonzo ball was never ever deemed a player that you were going to plug in and automatically get production from he was not ever the player that was going to come in and give you immediate results everybody understood that if they drafted lonzo ball you were getting a player that had a tremendous basketball iq which is demonstrated by his outlet passes and you know his ability to find the open man and run the pick and roll masterfully but you are also getting a player that is going to need some development someone's gonna have to change his shot someone's gonna have to teach him to put on some muscle and how to drive to the basket someone's gonna have to help him use some of that pseudo athleticism that he showed at ucla to become a good player but there's yet another problem and before we get to that problem guys very briefly if you watch a lot of my content you get it it's recommended to you and you always click on it but you're not subscribed please take this moment hit that subscribe button every subscription really helps contribute to my goal of being a full-time youtuber as soon as i hit 500,000 subscribers i will be going full-time on youtube or as soon as i hit 100,000 subscribers that turn on my notifications i will be going full-time on youtube i'm currently at 30,000 people in my noti gang every little bit helps and on top of that i have been getting hit with some copyright claims so just in case that my channel gets taken down for copyright infringement or anything like that i am going to continue to upload my content on instagram or instagram tv so make sure you're followed there just as an additional means for me to reach out to y'all if something is to happen to my channel now here's the reason i'm making this video and it's really great to make a video like this because in the past i've gotten some hate for being too much of a hater ironically a lot of people thought that my content was hating on lonzo ball or hating on nba players and i really like making positive content to make you guys excited about players as opposed to oh man this sucks this player is on the downhill but for those of you guys that didn't know or didn't see there's a couple of things I need to bring to your attention. For one, the New Orleans Pelicans out of nowhere are currently on a winning streak. At the moment that I'm making this video, the Pelicans are still 14th in the Western Conference, but they are currently in the midst of a nice little winning streak. They've currently won five games in a row, and they actually are beginning to look up and fulfill that promise that many analysts myself included thought that they could live up to at the beginning of the season remember i did think that this was a team that could sneak in to the eighth seed in the western conference they did have a perfect amount of veterans and youth talent in order to get to get them over that hump on top of that when you have drew holiday jj reddick Derek favors zion williamson brandon ingram lonzo ball josh hart 
you just can't help but feel like that is an eighth seed team. That This is a team that should be a little bit better than the OKC Thunder if they were all healthy, but that's the problem. There's multiple variables that were going into the season that held the Pelicans back up until this point. One of the variables was the development of Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, and Zion Williamson, and even more so is the fact that Zion was injured the entire year so far, but we also got some word that Zion is expected to play this year. They are not going to Ben Simmons him or Blake Griffin him because they want to see how this unit plays together. And I don't blame David Griffin because he actually went out of his way to put a great unit together that could potentially compete this year. But here's the next thing I want to bring to your attention, and it has to do with Lonzo Ball. And I know that's the main topic of this video. There's been times where Lonzo Ball has had games like this, and he has played phenomenally. And don't get it twisted. He had an incredible game against the Houston Rockets last night. 27 points, 10 rebounds, 8 assists. Is the It's pretty much the game that we've been waiting for Lonzo Ball to have for the Pelicans for quite some time. He had seven threes. But again, there has been games like this for him in the past. There has been games where he has put up a ton of numbers. He finally seems to have figured it out. And then the next game, he reverts back to scoring like 8.7 assists and like six rebounds. There's been games like this. And I do want to think that this is a positive, this is a positive trajectory for Lonzo. And he even went out to say, I knew this wasn't going to happen overnight. This is a new shot for me. Um, hopefully it can get consistent over time. In the past, let me tell you what would screw Lonzo Ball over. He would have a game like this and then either he would get injured or he would get distracted or he would get passive on the court. Whenever Lonzo learns to be aggressive, he tends to do very well. But my question is, how aggressive could Lonzo be in a system that involves Brandon Ingram dominating the ball for the most part? And then you also have players like Drew Holiday. And then once, oh, and put them aside, once Zion Williamson gets back, you're not going to have the opportunity. Lonzo isn't going to have the opportunity to dominate the ball. And in order for Lonzo to be successful in the New Orleans Pelican system, he needs to be able to dominate the ball. He needs to be able to find wide open teammates and his teammates are going to have to be okay playing off the ball from him. But here's the problem. Brandon Ingram, he's a great player. He is just subpar at playing off the ball from Lonzo Ball. He is very subpar playing off the ball from anyone. He's the type of player that needs the ball in his hands in order to be successful. Zion Williamson, I believe, could do a little bit of both. I feel like he could play off the ball, but it's not going to be, you're not going to have Zion spotting up from three waiting for Lonzo to kick it out to him. If that's just not the best way to use Zion. The best way you can use Zion and Lonzo Ball is obviously in pick and roll situations, but there's only so much that you could do that. So the question remains is, are the Pelicans truly the best team for Lonzo? And if they aren't, what should the Pelicans do with Lonzo? I personally think that the Pelicans are doing the right thing by Lonzo so far. The very the good news is the fact that Lonzo is working to become more of a spot up shooter, as we saw in his game against the Rockets last night. He hit seven threes, and in order for Lonzo to be successful in today's NBA as an unathletic, well, not as an unathletic, but Lonzo's game isn't based off of his athleticism. He has some athleticism, but his game isn't based off of his athleticism. So if he wants to be successful in the NBA as the high basketball IQ type player that can't always drive into the basket but could still score somehow he needs to be successful as a perimeter shooter that could spot up without the ball and that's how he could provide value to any nba team i'm giving Lon if lonzo is watching this video uh, which i doubt he is but i'm giving him advice to last in the nba for an additional maybe eight years i'm serious if lonzo could figure out a way to be effective without the ball in his hands. Be a scorer without the ball in his hands. Very similar to how Derrick Rose kind of resurrected his career. And once his athleticism started to go away, what did Derrick Rose do? He learned how to be a more effective spot-up three-point shooter. He doesn't need to dominate the ball as much. This is the exact same issue that Carmelo Anthony had. And this is why Carmelo Anthony had so much trouble finding a team initially. 
teams do not want a player that has to have the ball in his hands to have an effect in, on the game. Unless if it's an exception. Like, say if you have LeBron James. Obviously, LeBron James is so effective once the ball is in his hands. And he's such a threat to score and find the wide open teammate or run a great and efficient offense that you don't care if he has to dominate the ball. Because that's how good LeBron James is. Most teams nowadays want a player that could contribute to the flow of the offense. Because once a player dominates the ball in his hands, if he's having an off night, it takes the entire team out of rhythm. But for the most part, this is a positive video. I think Lonzo Ball is beginning to trend upward. I really like New Orleans' commitment to developing him. They are doing exactly what they need to do in order for Lonzo Ball to get better, and that's very nice to see. At the end of the day, I would like to see a way for Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, all to mesh their talents together and grow with each other. And I believe that's what the Pelicans are trying to do. And if they continue doing what they're doing right now, I could see them all being successful. The problem is each player is going to have to mildly change it, change up their game. Brandon Ingram and Lonzo Ball will have to be better spot up shooters. They're going to have to be able to be effective without the basketball in their hands all the time. But the talent is there. They just have to be plugged in to the right scheme. Let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think? Do you think the Pelicans could make a push for the 8th seed this year? Do you think Lonzo Ball is finally going to break out of his very stagnant numbers of averaging 10 points per game for the past three years? Do you think the Pelicans should trade Lonzo Ball? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thanks for watching.